we have um we have world of warcraft graphics 2001 to 2023 they're very different personally i've i've said this before i really like the classic style graphics like 2004 graphics yeah they're outdated but the style of them is also different it, it, to me it's not better and worse it's a different style of art um but i'm curious on the evolution of, of things because i feel like in and and classic wow it was nice and tbc it felt nice and wrath felt nice and kata felt nice and moppa felt nice was it war yeah warlords of draenor to me is where it went downhill they started the the model started flowing weird instead of having like a responsiveness there was more of a a fluidity but not in a good way it was like uh like the, the art style was like smoother and like less jagged and the gameplay i feel like felt fundamentally different from that cartoony is a, is a better word than fluid cartoony is a great word so they were like bouncy and cartoony from wad forward and i actually don't like that and people are like well the graphics are better and i'm like well better is an interesting word on this right because the graphics are were, were different and i think i prefer like the 2004 to 2000 14 style graphics better anyway let's take a look at the video and see exactly what happened here and when that shift happened wow graphics went from five polygon models to dynamic weather effects and super expressive faces it's astonishing to see how basically the old warcraft 3 engine evolved into what you see currently and you're going to see it all today packed up with some tech leaps not even we knew about alpha world of warcraft set the stage for a lot bigger things to come and hey it's we perfect. can all appreciate the roots even if those roots look filthy and rotten to the core. Sorry, I might have been talking about the female no model, but clearly a lot of stuff is incomplete. And as we know, not everything made it into the live game eventually. The first iteration of WoW's engine was made from the actual Warcraft 3 engine, and that translated quite a lot into the visuals of the MMO. I mean, it's one thing to see those models and effects from a bird's eye view, like in the strategy game. It's another to get down among them and cringe at the details. Spell animations from Alpha were slightly different and polished once the game launched and dances. I mean, this looks fine, but we ended up with the Macarena for the human female as an example. Way that better. and a lot of textures right. were eventually improved for ground effects. Possibly the biggest changes were the character models. Very early Whoa, look at the what? trolls, orcs, and torrents oh can cause gosh. nightmares in the younger audience. Please be advised. Clearly, the menu and character screens received massive upgrades, but still, oh we gosh. have to appreciate the fact that these were not the final race models we ended up with because holy goddamn sh overall the production of the game did feel a bit rushed even when vanilla launched i haven't seen a lot of these alpha images like ever this looks wild yeah i haven't i haven't seen these alpha images like ever man huh even when vanilla launched in 2004 the overall graphics were inferior for its era and put a lot of people off from the textures of trees and bushes all the way to some critter models obviously from the alpha we received massive improvements but we is that statement true he said for the time period the graphics were off in 2004, we had like RuneScape and like EverQuest and stuff. I don't think the graphics were off in 2004, were they? Let me let me listen to exactly what he said again. People off from the textures of were inferior for its era and put a lot of people. Off. They were inferior for its era. Is that true? Like we had Oblivion with similar or worse graphics, right? We had. I don't know. I don't think that's really true. I think that's a false. I think that's a not. I think that's a false claim. For the era, I think the graphics were fine. Yeah, now they're outdated. But we had RuneScape, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I think the graphics were nice for its time. I'm gonna disagree with that. Off from the textures of trees and bushes all the way to some critter models. Obviously, from the alpha, we received massive improvements, but with the focus of accessibility for most machines at the time, Vanilla WoW kept up low polygon count. Let's actually take a look. Let's pause the video. EverQuest 2004. 
This is what EverQuest looked like. I would say WoW looks better than this. Um, probably. Guild Wars 1. Okay. WoW looks way better than this, right? For sure, way better. Let's look at RuneScape 2004. WoW looks way better than this. Let's look at, a, uh, when did Oblivion launch? Oblivion release date. Was it 2008 or something? So 2006. So this is like five years later. This is five years later. And I would still say WoW looks better than Oblivion, I think. For the most part. Maybe. I guess two years later, because we're not talking about Alpha. Well, I don't know. Some things in Oblivion might look a little better. Some things in Oblivion might look a little better. What do you guys think is better, Oblivion or... Yeah, Oblivion might actually have better graphics than WoW. Yeah, but, but it's two years later, to be fair. It's two years later, to be fair. But I don't know. I think I still disagree with the sentiment that for the era, the graphics were terrible. I think I still disagree with that. Check Lineage 2001. Um, like this. This is similar, but probably a little worse than WoW. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep watching. But I just I just don't yeah I, I don't think it was like terrible by any means. That was WoW. This screenshot was WoW. Was this like pre-alpha WoW or something? <laughs> Elwin Forest. It does say Elwin here. Yeah, it does look very WoW esque. <laughs> which resulted in blocky looking characters and landscapes. The texture resolution was fairly low, giving off blurry and unappealing textures at times. More to do with the memory and storage constraints for the era's PC specs. The lighting and shadows were also very simplistic. You can even see an improvement between vanilla and the current classic servers, let alone Dragonfly. The animations for the characters were limited and clearly antiquated compared to the present day Dragonfly variations. The art style of vanilla wall was intentionally stylized to accommodate the hardware limitations which also meant that the game's visuals were not as realistic or detailed as what players might expect from contemporary games the burning crusade launched in early 2007 and for its time the graphical improvements introduced helped to elevate the visual quality of the game and create a more immersive experience for players as for the environment tbc introduced the new continent of Outland, which featured stunning and otherworldly landscapes. The environments were more detailed, colorful, and diverse, providing players with a fresh and visually captivating experience. The disconnect from the original world was also strong, with Outland being very cosmic, broken, and magically floating in the twisting nether, compared to Vanilla's grounded depiction of continents, islands, and mountains. Overall, the expansion utilized higher resolution textures for everything, resulting in a better world and characters but also improved upon the lighting and shadows together with a better visual for the water and weather effect. 2008 marked the release of Wrath of the Lich King, oh. to this day the most critically acclaimed expansion. The environments in Northrend took a big up in overall textures and models. They were more diverse, detailed and expansive, offering players a visually stunning and atmospheric experience, possibly the most immersive oh. zones they have ever made to this day. Both player characters and NPCs received more nuanced facial expressions and lifelike movements, improving overall visual storytelling, but also adding once again to the immersion factor. Together with the environment, the higher resolution textures were clearly a significant upgrade and likely contributed heavily to the overall appreciation of the expansion. Note here that the capabilities of the graphic cards and processors were also starting to really accelerate, and this was quite evident on the improvements in Wrath and even more evident in expansion 
actions to follow. One of the most impactful spell and ability effects received was the fire effect that was showcased early in such dungeons as Utgard Pinnacle, a feat that was of course accompanied by more advanced lighting and shading. I just remember soloing this like a billion times to power level, like AoE grinding this with Living Bomb, dude. Creating more realistic and immersive lighting effects, even for a game such as World of Warcraft. This added depth and atmosphere to the game world, especially in the darker and shadowy areas. Water rendering also was further enhanced, making bodies of water look even more realistic and reflective. Water effects in this expansion contributed to the overall visual spectacle, particularly in zones with icy landscapes and frozen lakes, which were made even more impressive with the incorporated atmospheric effects, falling snow and blizzards in Northrend, adding to the wintry theme of the expansion. Wrath of the Lich King introduced a new technology called phasing, which allowed for dynamic changes in the game world based on player's progression in certain quests or storylines. This feature added a new layer of immersion and impacted the player's experience, showcasing how the game's graphics adapted to reflect changing circumstances. All of this culminated with a detailed raid and dungeon design featuring epic and grandiose architecture, adding to the sense of adventure and challenge. At the peak of its popularity, World of Warcraft took a bold turn with Cataclysm in 2010 by completely revamping the old world we call Azeroth. New terrain, quest hubs, and revamped zones were improved with better environmental details and terrain textures, making the first and only time in WoW's history when the old worlds were completely revitalized. Since then, we have had changes to old quests here and there, but nothing to this scale, shaking the very foundations of what players grew up with, especially for those that started in vanilla WoW. Water rendering was further enhanced, making water bodies appear more realistic and visually appealing. Additionally, weather effects like rain snow and up to this point I, st I i i agree that the graphics seem to improve it didn't feel it kept the stylistic approach that the original classic team was going for i think and it was just kind of better i want to see what happens in wad because in wad is when it went downhill in my opinion right um the the graphic styles started looking cartoony different not wow feeling not warcraft feeling this the art style fundamentally changed i think it was wad um but yeah up to this point i think we have slow improvements the animations were still there with the 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 shadows looked better but the game still felt very wow-esque right so let's let's see Sandstorms were improved, contributing heavily to the immersion of the game world. As for the characters, they continued to be refined and enhanced with better models, textures, and animations, together with new spell and ability effects, offering more variety and visual impact during gameplay, especially when going into the new dungeons and raids, which featured more intricate and visually impressive design, immersive environments, and challenging encounters that were even more emphasized with the boosted phasing technology, having all of the zones change based on the player's quest progression. The two new races introduced, Worgans and Goblins, were the first ones to use a more complex rig with added polygons, resulting in a clear visual distinction from all the other races and laying the ground for what was to come in Mists of Pandaria. And that happened in 2012 when we first saw the Pandaren models. Rigging and polygon count increased even further, resulting in some of the most fluid combat animations and an incredible facial expression palette, which was quite impressive at the time. We went from faces having a couple of textures, moved to faces having particular parts and bumps, eyes, cheeks moving naturally. The expansion would eventually receive praise for its beautiful environment, engaging character animations, and overall visual polish. So he does talk about fluidity with increased uh, polygons, which is interesting because maybe that's exactly what a lot of the older players don't like, but maybe that's not the case. Let's see what happens later on. But I do think pandas... Wargans and goblins maybe got that upgrade that we were talking about just a second ago a little bit earlier than the rest because the rest kind of stayed OG for a bit longer contributing to the ongoing success of the game. The expansion featured an art direction influenced oh, by so Asian beautiful. culture and aesthetics. So this cool. unique art style extended to the architecture, landscapes, and character designs, providing players with a fresh and visually distinct experience. It added new creature models and animations with an emphasis on detail and realism. Creatures in Pandaria showcased more expressive movements and lifelike behaviors, breathing more life into the open world. The expansion utilized advanced particle effects, adding more 
visual flair to spells and abilities and environmental effects. The improvement was also visible with better water rendering, better reflections and realistic movements in Pandaria's lakes, rivers and coastal areas. With improved lighting and atmospheric changes as time progressed contributed to a more immersive world. And let's not forget that some of the most epic moments in the expansion took advantage of not only the upgraded phasing technology with if someone came up and asked you what is the most immersive world of warcraft expansion what would you say immersive classic legion pc vanilla 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 classic mop van i think a lot of people would say vanilla right and i think one of the reasons for that is not necessarily just the graphics alone. I'm not saying that they're necessarily superior, but the lack of phasing, layering, all that kind of stuff, and a smaller world and no flying, I think made it more immersive, right? Once you add flying and phasing and layering and, um, and, uh, like just Outlands, Northrend, um, mop area. And like right all, once you start adding all of that in <clears throat> it becomes less immersive right because players are spread out and they're flying and all of a sudden it just feels like you're not in that same classic homey world so uh, but from a graphics perspective i guess i see his take with the Siege of Orgrimmar event that destroyed a whole zone, almost, but one of the largest raids ever made that took place on so many levels of Pandaria, Durotar, Orgrimmar, and a whole city underneath the Or capital. Warlords of Draenor came out in 2014 and was to this- uh, you, you guys want to pull mid-video? Alright, pull mid-video, we're pausing. Most immersive, immersive expansion. Uh, we can only do five options. We'll do two TBC, vanilla TBC, Wrath, Cata, Mop. Does anyone think after Mop? Vanilla wasn't an expansion. Okay, most immersive, what do you want to call it? Version of WoW. Okay. A lot of people are saying Legion. Crap. Um, let's get rid of... I don't know if, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get rid of TBC. Well, no, hmm. No one's gonna vote Kata. Okay, we'll do vanilla TBC mop. Vanilla TBC wrath mop. Uh, you know, I guess we're, let's just gonna, let's just do vanilla TBC wrath Kata mop. Sorry, you can't vote m more, uh, you can't vote after that. Let's just, the first five expansions, let's go. And we'll, we'll keep watching the video. This day, the single biggest upgrade to the overall world environment when it comes to textures. The landscapes in Draenor were richly detailed, featuring more complex terrain elements and environmental assets that gave the game an incredible, fresh, and modern feeling compared to Mists of Pandaria. This was accompanied by the first major character model update. This massive overhaul of character so models for some of right the there. original races in the game revolutionized yeah. the visual presentation of the game. People saw the wargons and goblins, they were blown away by the Pandaren and they wanted the same treatment to the OG races in the game. Both Alliance and Horde races, including orcs and humans, received significant updates to their models, making them- Like, the, like so this is when it was. It was Warlords, I was right. Like, the difference though is it's just, it's more cartoony. Like, like this has a very Warcraft feel. The pull ended, it's, it's vanilla, which is not a surprise, I, I don't think. Um, and th this just feels more cartoony. Yes, it's better. It is better. Objectively better. But it's also different. Like, it's more cartoony. It just feels less Warcrafty. And that's when they did it. It was, it was in Warlords. And I think it pissed a lot of people off. And, uh, time has passed. And I still think a lot of people are pissed off about it. But I still think, I mean, obviously people, people love it too. Game. Both Alliance and Horde races, including Orcs and Humans, received... Yeah, yeah, I think I, the, the second ones just feel less Warcrafty. 
significant more updates Disney. to their models, yeah, like making Disney. them more detailed and appealing, especially with the facial expressions that made Ma the past expansions Quad. almost yeah. unrecognizable. The new texture technology for the world was probably best represented <clears throat> through the garrison system. Every building, every wall, every fence and door was boosted in terms of their resolution and overall visual quality and stood as a precedent for future architectural changes the game would have in the following years. Possibly the most ambitious- A, a lot of people, what a lot of people wanted was a checkbox. Default, new graphics. Checkbox, use old style graphics, right? So you could just have the old models and feel of the game, that Warcraft feel if you wanted. Blizzard obviously didn't want to do that. And maybe for good reason. And maybe for technical implications too. But that's, that's what a lot of people... That's what they wanted. ...expansion ever made to this day. They, they had that, but it didn't, it didn't work on... Um, uh, ...animations. Cast animations, movement animations. It's, it didn't really work the way it should have worked. Trust me, I know, because I was pissed was Legion, which released in 2016. Every feature added, it came with a visual upgrade to pretty much everything. In terms of character animations and spell effects, the best example would be the new hero class Demon Hunter. They came with unique visual effects, particularly their metamorphosis abilities and use of fell magic. The introduction of artifact weapons was accompanied by improved textures for items in general. Not only did the new weapons look more striking and detailed, but the technology was used for the armors as well while the garrison technology from worlds of draenor was used to create and improve player hubs in the form of the class order halls each and every one of the class order halls had a distinct flavor emphasized with upgraded textures and particle effects legion added more dynamic weather effects making the game world feel more alive and responsive to changing conditions while out in the open world as well as an increase in draw distance which was something that has evolved over the years with each passing expansion to what it ended up back then and of course the dungeons and raids received massive improvements to their architecture and overall visual appeal 2018 marked the release of battle for azeroth and the start of a major backlash from the players in terms of the expansion's reception whether this contributed to the visual presentation of the expansion is unknown suffice to say that bfa at was. the very least improved on a lot of aspects it was also the first expansion where we receive allied races where the devs took big liberties in character models even when using older rigs from other races for their risk i don't i don't think bfa was low uh regarded lowly because of the graphics at all i i, I think the graphics were similar to what i think t bfa was the, the the gearing system was to me one of the worst gearing systems like ever right animations. It also continued to improve character models and animations adding more details, smoother movements and enhanced facial expressions for better visual storytelling. On top of the improved textures and some of the most visually striking skyboxes, BFA came with dynamic weather changes and environmental hazards adding to the immersive experience. But for all its praises, it had some of the most unforgivable visual representation of a zone that ended up being the final raid. And yes, I am talking about the Nihilotha jpeg skybox the raid felt like it took two steps back from the step forward the expansion made in terms of graphical design which is a shame because the previous raids were incredible and not to mention najatar was an artistic marvel in terms of immersing the player in an underwater zone that was sucked dry out of the sea so we can explore it shadowlands the black sheep of wow expansions made its debut with one of the most ambitious skybox changes as if to make up for the jpeg it left us with 8.3 not only that the new zones were entirely taken from what seemed to be a different game in terms of their visual aspect they were heavily themed to their story and artistic depiction of whatever fantasy concept they were conveying in terms of death whether it was the vampiric venture in revendreth the druidic arden world forests the undead machinations of maldraxxus or the heavenly afterlife of bastion each zone was polished zone with a color sick. palette unique textures 
resonating in the ground it was, it flora and fauna to further immerse the player in their pocket world. The art direction, whether questionable or not, cannot be understated on how much it improved from BFA. With the covenants being introduced, the player received access to a whole new package of spell animations and effects themed towards each individual zone and associated party. In terms of hardware improvements, by supporting Direct X12 and Ray Tracing, World of Warcraft's graphics were further improved in Shadowlands, providing players with more stunning visuals and enhancing their overall gaming experience. Shadowlands continued to refine character models and animations, adding more detail and improved facial expressions, making characters appear more lifelike. It brought new environmental effects such as dynamic weather changes, particle effects and atmospheric enhancement, all tying up in some of the most ambitious raid designs in terms of effects, texture quality and yeah, even skyboxes. It did suffer from palette consistency, where at times it served them well with the Nathria raid and other times it would be counterproductive with the Sanctum of Domination raid. For all its visual technological upgrades, the reception of some of the artistic choices left a lot to be desired from the atmosphere to the color choices to paint the zones in what would have been their accurate artistic depiction. The biggest counterpoint to their chosen color palette would be the Corthia zone, which remains to this day the most depressing and disliked <laughs> zone ever made and it had most to do with its graphical presentation. Yeah, in Corthia fairness, Zerath Mortis, really although depressing. artistically questionable, spiced up the color palette and lighting of their zones together with its accompanying raid, breathing a breath of fresh air into the game. The choice in architecture might not have resonated with everyone, but it would be undoubtedly unique and clearly an upgrade at least in the texture and particle effects department. And with that we come to the present day with 2022's Dragonflight expansion. The first and most obvious change was the player UI. Although in the past this has received minor improvements from texture to icons, now it was completely scrapped and redone from ground up, adding another graphical element from WoW's history to the modern visual bucket. At the time of making this video, the team is continuously improving the in-game assets and graphical design of the interface together with spell effects for classes left behind and likely more to come by the end of the expansion. With the strikingly beautiful new zones came an even higher draw distance and water effects. The improvement on the environment textures allowed the devs an increase in freedom when it comes to visually designing unique zones with more vibrant colors completely contrasting the somber feeling players were left with in Shadowlands. The flora and fauna of the Dragon Isles blend naturally with each other from from the use of logical color palettes. And in terms of zone design, the Zeralek Cavern has brought with itself an innovative way of creating terrain into already existing assets with a seamless transition between the surface and the underground. The improvement to the character models came as a package deal with a new race, the Drakthir, that had more options for customization than any other race in the past. Once again, its artistic design being overall questionable. The theme of the expansion being heavily focused on vibrant colors is not only visible in the new race and class with new spell effects, animations and dynamic character movements but also for all the customizations the players can interact with. From hair colors to dragon riding mounts which on their own came as well with a new flying system that expands on the player's perspective on space and speed by cleverly manipulating the landscape to give the feeling of a high octane dragon ride. The benefits of being a live game for almost 20 years has given World of Warcraft one of the most impressive visual journeys any media media has undergone. Jam-packed with nostalgia, emotions, wonder and excitement, the art team has yeah, continuously baby. surprised people with better and better graphical assistance to contribute to their fun out in the world. And to have even more fun, it's not enough to simply be engrossed in the visual aspect of the game, but also a much more crucial thing is ignored by too oh, many people sick. when it comes to the enjoyment of the game. Find out what took the fun out of WoW, or at <laughs> least one of the biggest reasons the fun all right i have so much to say about this but first i want to ask you guys in what expansion do you guys believe that graphics peaked in wow and you can say dragonflight so current expansion you could say like any expansion when did graphics peak in wow so dragonflight seems to be the number one i'm seeing some Okay, Shadowlands, Classic, Mop, Wrath. Personally, I, I really, really enjoyed the style of like 
classic through wrath even like kata and up to mop but like i said at the start of video once we went to wad i think something changed and you might call me an idiot but let's have this discussion for just a second when you're talking about art i think saying better and worse is a really weird terminology and the reason i think that is because you can have pixel art would you call this bad or would you call this an art style to me i would call this an art style these are good for what they're trying to do all right you can have hyper realistic art okay with this would you call this good? Well, I mean, yeah, clearly, but it's also they're trying to mimic real life. Which one's better? Well, they're two different art styles, right? It's not so simple to say one like, right? They're just different. They're they're just different styles of art. Once again, you start talking about um really 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 popular games. You have Minecraft, one of the most popular games in the world. Are you gonna call Minecraft, like should Minecraft update their graphics to, it's like, well, no, the whole point of Minecraft is that Minecraft looks like Minecraft. That's the whole, that's part of the appeal. You don't wanna update Minecraft's graphics and make things l more fluid and more Disney. And, and, and it's like, the, Minecraft is supposed to have this art style. Let's continue. Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike looks very different than like, battlefield um or i'm trying to think of like what's the most visually appealing shooter i don't understand your argument we're gonna get there what's the most visually okay so apex maybe getting to the point yeah we're getting to the point i mean you should probably kind of see the point but we'll, we'll get there we'll wrap it back around counter strike clearly a massive 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 game i think objectively has worse graphics than some of these other games, right? But it's still Counter-Strike. It has an art style. And I would say it's unfair to say that the style is worse or better. It's Counter-Strike art style, right? So I guess one of the things with this video is that they're saying it improved, it improved, it improved. When like when we're wrapping it back around, you have like Among Us has an art style. You have a hyper-realistic style. You have Minecraft as a style. You have Counter-Strike. And then you have like Fortnite, right? And Fortnite, once again, isn't, isn't trying to mimic real life necessarily. It's not trying to be a battlefield or a, it's not supposed to be a Call of Duty. They're like, it's supposed to um, feel more not realistic specifically. So anyway, getting to the point is it's not just better and worse. There's different styles of art, period. And if you make Counter-Strike feel too much like real life, I think it loses the Counter-Strike appeal. If you make Fortnite feel like too much like real life, it loses the Fortnite appeal. If you make Minecraft feel like too updated like real life, it loses the Minecraft appeal. And if you make WoW graphics feel like real life, it loses the WoW appeal. Right? And I think that's the problem that a lot of people have with WoW graphics in 2024. Yes, they're better. But when we're looking at art styles, I think they've lost the appeal of Warcraft art compared to the art style that Warcraft players from the beginning understand and know. Objectively better, but the style of art matters. That's the point. And I, yeah, I, so that, I guess that took a while to get there. Um, so yeah, I think, here's the thing. You can disagree that the graphics are better or worse, whatever, that's fine. But you can't disagree that different art styles exist and people prefer different art styles. And a lot of the world's most popular games are not hyper-realistic art styles. A lot of the world's most popular games are specifically um, not super, super, super realistic and let's make things better and better and better just because we can. And instead they go for a certain style of art instead. That's that's not that's not an opinion, right? That's that's like we we've proven example. Like that's that's, yeah. So you can you can disagree which one you like better, or which one I like better. Or, oh, I like Wrath, or I like Mop, or I like Dragonflight. But that's that fact still stands, right? That art styles do exist. Um, anyways, that's the larger point that I'm like shocked the video didn't talk about. I thought that's kind of what the video would talk about because to me that's a really interesting point, right? 
Um, when did when did the WoW graphics peak in terms of the 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 feel and the vibe of that specific art style? It is the same art style though. I think the art style fundamentally changed here, and it's one of the most replayed parts of the video. Warlords of Draenor, right? You have you have like WoW art style, and then this art style doesn't feel like WoW, right? And then here again, you have like WoW art style, and then this Disney, right? And it's a common thing. People talk about it. Oh, WoW feels cartoony. Well, why do they say that? Why do a lot of people say that? Well, because there's some truth in it, right? There's some truth in it. Disney feeling, cartoon feeling. When did WoW start feeling like a cartoon? Once again, WoW art style, cartoony Disney art style, right? The, the style is different, not just the upgrade, the style. If they upgraded it while keeping and maintaining the style, I think that the, the people wouldn't have that um, feeling, right? I think that, that wouldn't be a conversation, but it is. Yeah. Style is completely different. <laughs> style is not that much different. Well, clearly people see it um, both ways. Clearly people see it both ways. But anyway, it's, it's a cool thing to consider and to think about one way or the other. Whether, whatever side you're on, it's still cool to uh, kind of understand both sides. 100% agree. Can't imagine Unreal Engine WoW. It wouldn't be WoW. Yeah. I agree with Czar. Yeah. There's a lot of people that disagree too here, right? Type 1 in the chat if you agree with me. Type 2 in the chat if you disagree. There's people on both sides here. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. Like, yeah. Maybe more 1s than I expected, honestly. But yeah, there's, there's, there's people on both sides. So, like, let's, let's, let's just be... Let's have an, an adult conversation that neither side is absolutely stupid and ludicrous, but instead it's a different perspective to the conversation. Right? Agree to disagree. You're right. That's fine. Cool. All good, Zar. I'm a reasonable chatter, and I don't get upset with different opinions. What a giga chad. Okay. Okay. Um, I got a five dollar dono. I'll play it again. It's, he says, "Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be irresponsible for a company to update graphics to some degree to think about the new player experience?" Do you mean to not update the graphics? Wouldn't it be irresponsible for a company to not update the graphics? Artist objective, so nobody's technically wrong. Well, exactly. Yeah. I think both perspectives are valid. I think both perspectives are valid as well. I really do. I, I understand people are like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, these are objectively better models. Like, once again, with the, un with the orc and then the updated orc. I can see what you're saying. Like, this is objectively better. But at the same time, it's a different style. And I just, I want, I want people to, to open their mind to that. That it's like, well, yeah, that is a, a different style of art. And people can have different preferences with those different styles, right? Anyway... With that hot take out of the way, let's get into some gaming.